tell them. So today we have very special guest, Fernell Miller. Now she is the CEO of The Root of Us. And you can check out all of her information at www.therootofus.com. That's all one word. So I'm not going to talk any much longer. <laughs> I want you to tell them, uh, Mrs. Miller, who you are and, and what company you represent. Oh, well, first, just I'm so, so grateful to meet you and get a connection and to start this conversation. We've already been talking behind the scenes, but um, let me share how I introduce myself. I'm Fernell Miller. I um, identify as a Black woman. She, her pronouns. I am a daughter, a sister, um, an aunt, um, a mother, uh, and an educator in our public school systems for, ooh, this will be, the school starting year will be 39 years. Wow. Wow. First of all, <laughs> praise God that you're still here with us. We're dealing with those kids for that amount of time. <laughs> yes. Yes. And um, I am from a family of educators and I, I really didn't want to be a teacher. Uh, but I am, but I didn't want to be, I was trying to do any, anything else, but that. And so, um, as I were, we were talking behind the scenes, uh, about racial isolation. And by the time we moved to, uh, Washington state and the school district and where my folks lived, um, I'm in a predominantly white school district. I was always my, the only black student in class, sometimes the entire school. I was one of four in my house high school, which is a, a 4A, you know, 3,000, 4,000 4, student high school. Wow. And the isolation was so uh, stark and rare and deep. And, and I had um, lots of skills to lay. I, I was an athlete. I was good in school. I had, you know, a, a community and, and connection, meaning I could be useful to the white community when it was sports time or, or, or you know, for whatever performance reason. But, but really, I wasn't I, I didn't have a, I didn't have a community. I didn't have space to be fully me. I could only, right. I could only be me if I was in these, you know, in these activities. Right. Or, Did you ever feel invisible? Oh, all the time. Well, you, it's the, it's the hyper visibility, meaning you stand out like a raisin in milk right. and then visible at the same time. Nobody will actually see and acknowledge that you're there. And so it's a very um, stark dichotomy. And so um, after going through school there, um, I, you know, I just was like, the world cannot be like this because I didn't, know, you know, my first um, education um, beginnings were not that I was in black community and indigenous community, black and brown people. And I hadn't seen white community until about age seven or eight. And so I knew I, I already had a picture of what, what people in the world and what, what the history and the, and the, the beauty and the brilliance of black and brown people, I already knew that. And then going into um, white community, I, I didn't see that. I saw that they, that was absent and that my teachers didn't speak on that, or maybe they didn't know, you know, I'm seven, I'm going, why don't they know anything? Right, right. So, but it's, but they're held, but it's on purpose and you don't know that. Yeah, yeah. And so I was going to say, oh, they knew, they knew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and that, that, that kind of intentionality is, is, is partly what holds them hostage as well. And mm -hmm. so we have to know that our humanity is wrapped together. Correct. And so I got through this experience and I thought, oh my gosh, I can, I can finally be free of this, but oh my gosh, it's everywhere. And so, um, as I decided, okay, I'm going to be a teacher Well, I'm going to go back and guess what? I'm going to teach PE. Mm -hmm. Um, because one, I, I love outdoors. That's where I feel the, the most, um, at home and core to myself, um, in nature, deep nature. And um, I was a gymnast going, uh, growing up through that. And so I have all those same stories of um, all our black gymnasts, uh, before, forerunners here. But, wait, wait, um, is it too late for me to be a gymnast? I'm in my ah! Okay. No, <laughs> it's like, too late. Okay, show, me, show me your finish. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, but, but PE <laughs> is a way that I could see the most um, students because it's a, you know, a graduation requirement. So I taught at the high school, I taught at the middle school, I'm teaching at the elementary now. And so I've taught over, you know, 12 or 13 schools to go back and disrupt that picture and to, you know, back into the same school system that I um, grew up through because I realized like, oh, well, if, if they never know, then who will, who, who will tell them, who will show them, who will be that difference. And so to um, be teaching in this same um, uh, community for 30, whatever years I said. <laughs> um, 39, I, I'm keeping up. <laughs> a, 
So it, it's, it's been, um, you know, what my ancestors have done is I, I, the children through the children, change the relationship, change the conversation, change the dynamic, you know, kids, when they go home they they go home and talking about, Oh, I had this fun PE teacher. We did. They don't go home saying, Oh, I had a black teacher. I had a, this, That's right. That's they right. just talk about, you know, uh, me. And then when, when, you know, open house comes around or whatnot, you know, the mouths are on the ground, like, what, 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 what are you doing here? And so it was that kind of, um, you know, disruption and education that helped to close the gap of that, um, you know, that all of that, that hasn't been, been learned or taught and been Mm -hmm. intentionally set it's intentional, intentional segregation, Mm -hmm. um, you know, suburbs and, and all of that is intentional. Especially back in the day, right? Things are starting to change a little more now. We're integrating more um, because, you know, the economics are changing for different races and classes of people now. But back then, it was definitely, right, a significant difference. And I can imagine, I can only imagine the level of, I guess, uh, disassociation that came with going to a school, like you said, that was so huge in you being, you know, a drop in the bucket full of people who don't look like you, who can't relate to you, who maybe question why you're even there, you know, type of thing, because of the way they were brought up. Right. So and um, even and even that I knew better, I began to question myself, like, am I, maybe I'm, am I the, am I the alien? What, what's going on here? Right. And when, when you're young, you don't have the, the art, the, the language to articulate that you just you just know something's, something's up, something's not something's right. Odd. Something's strange. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for sure. Know, youth have so much wisdom and brilliance and, and people love kids because, you know, when they can't, except for when they start to speak, because when they speak, they speak truth. They don't have yes. all that. And then we are, are all shocked about what they say. And it's like, no, no, they're just, they're just saying what they've watched. What they observe. Say. That's right. That's right. And that's the beauty of it, which gets us back to the core of who we are. I mean, I love, I love kids too. too. Miss Miller, y- your wig's on cricket today. I'm like, oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> They'll you. let you know when you're not right. Trust me. Yes, I, I, I have I, a three-year-old, so I, <laughs> I know all too well. <laughs> thank you for not letting me go out there looking silly. They, they love you. They want, they're not doing it to hurt. In of any course way. not. It's because they love you. So. Right. So, which is a strange dynamic when you think about adults and how they do things to intentionally hurt because we know better. Right. We know we better. And that is why I think racism, along with many other isms, is just the most ridiculous thing that we're having to deal with right now. We're in 2021, right? Right. Back back in my day, when I used to watch cartoons, I was thinking, hey, we'll be flying cars by now, you know, and really living into that new age and new technology phase of life. And it's like, while we're doing the technology part, I feel like from a biological evolutionary standpoint, in terms of thinking, we're not there yet. And I don't know how we miss the ride in elevating the way we think, really increasing our understanding of each other. We just have not crossed that boundary yet. Well, it's still on who we center and we center um, um, a white supremacy culture narrative and we center that. And so that's the center of our technology. That's the center of who gets to use it. That's the center of who's got okay. center, center, center. And so what I've always just tried to, to create is to um, spaces where um, our voices can be centered. And all of my spaces, um, I put the flag in the ground like this. I said, these are spaces for black and black and brown girls. And I say girls intentionally because we are <clears throat> aware and hear and come around and support our black men. And we, we hear their stories. They are elevated and, and, and highlighted on the news and in, in the papers always. And then who's, who's got those men, our brothers, our uncles, our cousins, our, our sons is the black women, but who's got us? Who's got the black women? And we always have to and, and, and get to have each other. And so our spaces are centered around that. And anyone else who wants to center and lift black girls and women is welcome to come. And so I have mm-hmm. lots of different people in my spaces and ages and they're multi-generational. I've got all kinds of uh, walks of life and, and genders in my spaces because we know that when we center and lift black girls and, and really black trans girls is where we can lift everybody all yes. at once. And so if we wow. never go to who's furthest from the education, who's furthest from the access, who's furthest from the, the protection, that's who we need to center around. And so 
um, that, so when I was in, you know, I'm teaching school. And so I've been having uh, mentorship spaces for um, youth and girls. And I, uh, I found a little space and I have the high school kids get out first and they go and I throw food at them and they do homework and they wait for the middle school to get there. And then the second round of food and homework and, and then wait for the elementary. And so there's got a cycle of seeing themselves in an older version and the mentorship that happens there is just, that's what I never had. And so I created, like, I needed to see myself a couple of grades older. I need to see the college girls in my, in my network or neighborhood. So then it was a normalcy to me. And and so that's what I started creating. And then I went, when the pandemic hit, I went a step further and went, I need, I need, I need adult. I need to see my adult women too. So so I just started. Because we need it too, right? A lot of us so badly need it. You know? So badly needed. And I, 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 kn- I knew how bad I needed it. And so I just put a little event bright link on my website, you know, I'm like, let me just see who comes. And oh my gosh, the floodgates open. I've got women from all across uh, the country and the yes, UK. I went to it myself. Canada I up. That- yeah. Oh, good. And, and all, we all want the same conversation conversation. We all need the same healing. And, and what happens is that collective healing can happen because what, what, one of the things I love to do is when we go around the circle and share is um, share about what self-care that is going on with your, with, within yourself right now, in your home and your family and job, wherever that is, because that gives me idea like, Oh, I didn't think of that. Right. Oh, wow. I, Oh, I, I, I was doing that, but I didn't think that was self-care. It is. Um, so just to hear all the ideas, and then just visually, when we are all on screen together, I can't tell you how many, I mean, every single um, woman on is like, I, I, I'm so glad I just got to see you all today. And yes, just I love your voice. And, and I was actually going to ask you, like the segment is actually called Sisterhood Self-Care Series, which yes. is also the name of this segment today. And um, so it's an active event, right, that you're hosting. Can mm-hmm. you tell them how to sign up for that event? Yes, two ways. So um, if you go on to Eventbrite and just type in Saturday, uh, what, what was my title? The Sisterhood Saturday. Self-Care Series. Yeah. Saturday, Sisterhood Self-Care Series. Type that in and it, and it comes up or go to the root of us, my website and click my calendar page. And then all the links of all, all of my spaces come up, but ju- just look at the Saturday link. And then you'll see the link there and you can sign up there. And then on Sundays is the racial healing circle, which is another intentional conversation that gives a space to practice um, and hold, hold space to talk about the hard things that we don't, we're not intentionally talking about. We don't live near each other. We're not church together. We're not at the, at the water station at work. Are we going to do that real quick? And no. So having those kind of conversations in mixed company, generational, all, all of those things, because we never got to in school. We never That's got right. to, and we're, we never got to, it always happened to us. And then we live in that trauma. And then we never get to talk about it, process it, understand right. it, uh, uh, learn about it. And then now we're adults. And then here we are. Uh, okay. Well, now I'm stuck in this trauma. So that's right. This is a and place. Then, and then we, and then we live our lives in this trauma. Right. And then we mm-hmm. dis- disassociate or misuse or abuse other people because of the result of not being healed from these traumas. So um, we definitely, I, I just love the fact that you're doing this. And so guys, make sure you check out this event and other events that are associated with Mrs. Miller's um, uh, root of us, the root of us with her company, because these are topics that we have to talk about. If we, because we're never going to heal if we don't, right? Right. And everybody can afford to, to have a counselor, unfortunately, right. even though that's one thing that I do promote on my show is that get counseling, get counseling. But the reality is not everybody can afford that. So why not have these open dialogue sessions where you it's can just therapy. get it on? It's, it's, it's a therapy. And, and that's what I, what I call racial healing. It's a therapy. And, and our youth need it as well. I've got several spaces where our youth are meeting to do this. And uh, I can't tell you how liberating it has been for them to have, um, you know, to be in the pandemic and not in school and then get to process and understand what's been happening to them all the time. Oh, they, yes. They got I, I really think that, back. yeah, we needed, we, all of us needed that year last year 
to process everything that we had been doing wrong, that we had been doing right. Things right. that have been done wrong to us, things that have been done right to us. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it not just for the children, for everyone. everyone. Even, yeah. even for me, you know, it was really a time to say, moving forward in this next phase, this is what I'm going to do differently, right? And this is how I'm going to handle this. Yeah, and that's how I came up with the root of our, the root of us. And um, my son, Kevin, who was on a a bit ago, he says, mom, I've been watching you do this and teach people and help and hold space. And I've been watching you do this for, for years, my, my own kids, my son, my daughter, and and, and, both my sons, and they just said, do it already. And so he sat me down in front of a website and on my thing, I just couldn't stop my fingers. It just was like, (laughs) so so please just go, just go read anything. I mean, you'll just learn and get resources and just feel liberated because it, it's a, it's kind of putting the dots together that you, you all, you knew about it, you knew, but yeah. nobody said it out loud, spoken it into truth. And so you notice I changed my nameplate down there. It says for nail Miller, she, and I need truth spoken. Sure. Right. Yes. Uh-huh. And that's what I, I center in all my spaces. I need truth. So there can be transparency and to build trust. And, um, I, I, I just, that's just how I do it. And, and I, I, and if I can't show up with my full authentic self, I, I can't ask anybody else to. And that's so right. I want to show up with all of my brilliant. I want to show up with all of my blackness. I want to show up with all of everything, all my mistakes. I want to show up with all of that and, and make enough space for everybody to do the same. And so that's, what's happening on a Saturday sisterhood self-care. That's what we're yes, doing. I love it. We are lifting each other, holding each other, um, uh, hearing and seeing each other, chastening each other, and just loving on each other. We're each other's healing. We're yes. each other's medicine. We need each other. And so I, I, that's it. We are. And I, there's so many of us that don't realize that, right? And we are combating this love that people are trying to give us. And we're making them the enemy because yeah. of unhealed trauma. So especially I see it a lot in uh, African-American females. And maybe I can say that because that's who I mainly socialize with. Now, I do have friends of other races, but the majority are black. And I see it, you know, amongst us all, right? They, mm-hmm. It could be a very strong dynamic of a relationship or friendship and one minute, and then weeks or maybe months later, the dynamic changes. But why does the dynamic change, mm-hmm. you know? But look at the freedom that black women have to express our emotions. We're between four and six. And at any given time when we are outside of that, we're going to be cut off, dropped, um, chastened, uh, fired, you know, all of these things happen. And so the trust window is so narrow. And like we said, like we were talking about before we started today is how do we even learn to trust each other when we can't even trust our own emotions to be, to show up and, and be validated or valued in the moment. And so we find these little windows to connect and here and here and here and here. But really, we need that over time. We need that collectively. We need we need practice at it. We need experience at it. That's why the the series that I have on Saturday, it's not going to end. I've been this has been over a year now that I've been doing this and it just keeps, you know, yeah. picking up and going and, and people come in for different seasons at different times. You're never late. You, there's, it's just going to be there because when there's space, even if you don't get to come and you know, there's space that lets you drop your shoulders and know that somewhere it's going on somewhere. It's being practiced. I have, yeah. a, I can tap into that if I want to, even if I can't go right now. And, and most, most women say, you know, I, I didn't know if I was going to come today, but I'm so glad I did. Oh, I was just going to lay around and watch movies today, but this was way better. So just getting a chance to practice and, and be yourself and, and heal with other women. It's just amazing. Oh, I, I can feel it. I haven't even attended yet. You know, I was going to ask you, you know, like what voice did you see voids that you see in our community that ignited you to be the change? That was the, um, the, well, here, let me credit. It's the black girl in suburbia experience. That was the void. So the um, documentary is by Melissa Lowry. She um, is out of Oregon and has done a beautiful job of telling and showing that story of the racial isolation, the hyper visibility, the uh, disconnect. 
and I'd never, I'd never seen my story. I've been, I've been trying to oh. like tell everybody I'm raising my hand over. Hey, 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 I'm, I feel like Horton. Here's a, here's a huge <laughs> story. Over, hey, 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 hey. And, right. and nobody believes me. And even when we showed the documentary, people didn't believe me like that mm-hmm. can't be happening. I'm like, yes, it's happening. And you wouldn't believe oh, how yeah. many students and, and adults are still facing that. That's in our workplace. It's in our mm-hmm. home. It's, it's everywhere. And so the void was telling that story that like they, they, there's no space for us. There's no space to be black here. There's no space for black women here. There's no space yes. for black men here. There's no space. We only get a little window. We're right. always in the seat of the learner. And then now we have a chance to speak on things that have come to light. And then, and, and we still only get to speak this much, like a teeny tiny bit, because if we say it too big or say it too loud, then somebody, you know, it's, a, we've been trained to um, keep white population and, and culture comfortable. And so, right. so I, so I just needed to, I just needed to smash that and disrupt that and, and speak into that and educate with that and build a relationship around that. And that's, that's just I where love I, I love everything about you, <laughs> everything about you. Like you have no idea. Who is your target audience? That would be, again, where I put my flagpole, Black girls and women, and anyone who wants to center and support um, Black girls and women, because then everybody gets seen and supported when we do that. And so I just, I, I can't say enough why. I mean, people always ask, well, why are we focused around Black people? Well, who have we put in the place to be furthest away from access from education, right. from um, uh, safety, from um, uh, from humanity, actual mm-hmm. humanity, where we were not even given the right to um, be human beings. We were labeled as animals. So who is the further? Who is that? Right. And who was used to breed that? Like we got to know our history. We've got to historicize. We've got to know our history. And, and also for the people who <laughs> have to be really transparent with this one. There's so many people who know our history, but they ignore it because now they're in places where they feel that, hey, I've made it. I don't have to worry about all of that that happened before me. Mm-hmm. But the reality is, you know, well, go ahead. I, I see you want to say, go ahead, go for it. <laughs> I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. And that's where... Um, that's where our deep love of each other needs to happen because, and, and that can happen if we, if we put truth around it, the truth is we, we want a proximity to whiteness, the positionality, the power, um, the, the money, the status, and we will put aside, uh, what do we have to give up or put aside to get that approximate to whiteness? We can never be white, but look at the ways I can do that with my position put and, um, positionality and a proximity. And so that's what is confusing for other races is to look at how black people, because, you know, they, the, the part about putting us all in a box anyway, like we all should have the same thoughts and the, the <laughs> mind and all that, which is a ridiculous thing anyway. It is. But when, yeah. we, when we realize and understand that we were taught to even hate ourselves and, and not respect black authority and, and, and black wisdom and, and youth, we, we were taught. And so that internal self-hatred, like the, like the two-sided coin, I said, there's pride and then deep resentment on the mm-hmm. other side and, and shame. And so we have to allow um, for each other's learning. We have to allow for our learning. But if we never speak the truth, about how we were conditioned. This is, you know, Martin Luther King, everybody has spoken about this, like know the truth about this. So then we can unlearn and undo that um, internal racism and and resentment. So then we can heal. But if you never, if you never talk about that and speak about, oh, look, this is why it's not, it's not them. I have nothing against them, but look what they've been conditioned to do and how Mm -hmm. the hatred shows up. And then it targets back and we stand on our own neck and, you know, other races do that too. But in the black society and black culture, that is extra dangerous because the whole world has been taught to do that. That's right. That's right. And we don't have any, and when we do it to each other, then who's going to be there to support us? Who's going to be there to protect us? 
when we're not even treating our own selves with love. And that's the problem uh, because the entire world in some respect is against us. And it's quite evident, especially in this country. So um, with that being said, um, I don't even want to ask the next question because you made it blatantly obvious what the <laughs> listeners will gain from your website. You have very strong content. You, you, you're nailing uh, some of the very hard hitting issues that we're kind of trying to work through in the U.S. right now. Actively, we're, we're doing things one step at a time. You know, a lot of protesting has gone on between last year and this year. Not sure how much of a change it's made, but it does. It, it, it has done something. And what it's done is that it's woken people, people up to the issue that we have, that Black people have always known that we've had, but other races are now, they're starting to acknowledge and um, own some level of responsibility for their own actions. And I think that at the end of the day is what most of us just wanted anyway, at the very least, is for people to acknowledge, right, the differences that they made between Blacks versus everyone else. Right. Well, it's, that level, it's that level of awareness. First, you have to know, uh, be aware enough to know that you're doing harm because first you have to stop harm. And then the next step is do no harm. But you, you can't do no harm if you haven't stopped the harm first. So become aware, you're not aware of, of it. <laughs> how am I harming? How? Yeah. Right. And then you can go to, oh, okay, do no harm. Because if you, you, lots of people want to jump into, you know, anti-racism and ally, but you're, but you're still doing harm. Mm -hmm. so so that comes that comes from internal yeah that comes from um interrogation of our own framework our own uh home our own mind before we step out of the door to tread on the rest of the world with with the harm that we're doing because we didn't take care of our own internal issues internal racism mm -hmm. ex all of those ways the oppression um and and that's one of the things you'll find on my website so since you're asking go to the top of my website, I have um, a racial field guide. And I, I made yes, this I for that. friends of mine who, you know, who ask me lots of questions about, well, what do I do? How, where do I start? Mm -hmm. How do I learn? How do I unlearn those who, what, where, when, why five questions. Mm -hmm. So I took, a, a, I took about 50 pages of beautiful, it could be like a coffee table book. It's so pretty, but <laughs> it's, it's basically challenging your internal fame framework to pop your bubble, to understand where you are, to historicize, understand your identity um, so you can understand others. Um, so there's one tool that you can use on there. And then on my store page, I have um, uh, an identity series that you can do. I'm going to be putting that on Teachable soon too, but um, it's just about a six week course that you can take with your own self or with your family or with a group of friends or with your um, co-workers, let's go through our identity crisis and learn who we are. Yeah. Talk about our history, understand where we come from. How did you get where you are? Who are your people? How did you get who was displaced for you to be here and, and, and forward? And what it all comes around to is the racial healing. And so it all kind of all, all my tools and education dump into a racial healing conversation which is what I hold on Sundays, every Sunday from 1130 to 1.30 uh, Pacific Standard Time. And that never ends either, <laughs> except for I'm going to take next weekend off. I got to start school. So I'm going to take, take one week. So break. she's a teacher. So this is yeah, definitely of your alley. Like she's the person that you want to see, right? You know exactly what you're talking about. You've done the research. You've done the hard work too. So kudos to you for that. So many oh, people need yeah. to tune into what you're doing. So make sure, guys, that you go to therootsofus.com. You're going to see it in the link right on the side of us, okay? And um, also, I just want to ask, are there going to be any other major events going on for the year 2021 or 2022? So, so yes and no, meaning I don't do major events all over the place. I like to teach people how to do events in their community. I like to show you how to start your own mentorship right where you are. Go get the movie, Black Girl in Suburbia, and show it in your household and bring all your kids' friends so they can have a start the conversation with, with who they're going to school with so they can have some understanding and um, protection and allyship um, while they're going to school. So I like to show people how to do that. Do your own right where you, right where you are. Um, there's so many, you know, beautiful events to go to all over. And so I, I kind of do the opposite and I want to show you how to do that in, in your own home. And then on my website, if you go to my calendar page, those are all my, my events that are going all the time. And the, 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 I want to tell you a secret, <laughs> the secret is our youth, 
our Black youth are absent from the media, from their voice. We're not hearing, seeing them anywhere unless it's, um, you don't even want to say because you know. And then once in a while, when, when one of them gets lifted up and everybody hold, like an Amanda Gorman story and everybody, oh my gosh, look. I'm, and it's just so painful to me because I can scoop up armfuls of Amanda's every, any Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And we are not, we are not centering our youth. And so the root of our youth is part of um, the root of us. And that's a place, again, I start with black girls and women and anybody who wants to center and support them and grow our community. And you can start that right where you are in Houston. I'd love to help you start a chapter of the root Let's of our Let's do community. it. So, Say no more. I'll that, come that, in. If y'all didn't know, the youth are our future and they are brilliant. And if I, if, if I didn't have my eyes locked with, with youth, I don't, I, I don't, I'd have let go a long time ago. I need right. to see that they are, um, I, I, I don't, I, you need another half an hour for me to talk about <laughs> the youth and the way. Don't worry, we, you'll come back. Okay. I want you back and whenever you're free. I know you're a busy That's, lady. And I, I want to bring I, with me to talk about that with you. So then you can definitely, see. definitely. I would love to do that. And lastly, of course, I want to ask, how can we support you? Um, I have a couple of um, places where you can either uh, donate money that I'm under a 401c3 under equity and education. And I'll give you that link to post. There's uh, one spot and that goes directly to the youth. So any monies that you would um, put in that goes into there so I can keep doing the programs and supporting them. I'm, I'm, I want the youth to be um, engaged and involved with their work, offer them credit and staff positions in this work because they they need to they love it it's a form of self care and self expression is to um lead and learn at the same time and they are beautiful at doing that and so there's one way to to donate um offering any kind of support i have a little uh, a be safe fund black and black students and family fund so then i can take care of immediate basic needs um phone bills, um, car re- replacements, uh, food, clothing. There's so many youth that have outgrown their clothes, but we don't have the funds to go shop and rebuy a, a wardrobe like that. So any donations into those two um, pots helps me directly take care of families and take care of youth. Um, and then just come come to our events and learn and and gra- grab stuff off my website and and, and learn. So it's yeah. all there, guys, on the root of us.com. Everything that we covered today on today's segment, which is Sisterhood Self Care Series, you can find all the information on the website. I'll give it to you one more time the root of us.com. Gosh, this 30 minutes went by so fast, but I want to thank you so much <laughs> for being the one of the most informative sisters I've ever met in my life, to be oh. honest with you. And I want to thank uh, Kevin. Um, for allowing his mom to come onto the show today. I didn't even know we were talking about this behind the scenes. I had no idea you guys are related. So listen, the charge it to my, my crazy mind, not to my heart. Um, and it was just a phenomenal interview. Honestly, you have a lot of strong, important topics and content that our company, I'm not a company. What am I talking about? Thinking about corporate America, our community needs to become more engaged and we need to just kind of let that wall of insecurity or mistrust, just let the walls down join the event okay it's on event right everything you need to know is on the website mrs miller you are crushing it oh, i want to thank you so much for doing what oh you're doing oh my gosh i'm so you grateful to be able to share what you're doing because you honestly <laughs> while i was listening to you i was like oh thank you god god is answering <laughs> prayers from all directions because we can't not one person can do it all you're doing a lot right But it's such a soothing feeling to know that there's other Black people that care just as much as I do or the next person does about our community. So when there's people like you, when there's people like me, when there's people like Gian and Archie on Raw Tape, when there's people like Jeff Strange, uh, shout out to him in New York, when there's multiple people like that who actually are pouring back into the community, whether it's to make you laugh or whether it's to make you address yourself, your real self, and find out who it is who you are, what it is that you're meant to do in life. When you have people who are talking about politics and talking about how you may not care about Republican versus Democratic parties, but you need to know about it. 
You need to know the information behind these politicians so that you can steer your vote in the correct you know, direction. All of these people, I'm just naming this, you know, and if I miss somebody, again, charge to my crazy brain, not my heart. You know, these people are giving our communities what we need as fuel to find ourselves, to make better decisions, to make the youth a lifestyle that's going to be a lot easier than ours growing up. So again, I commend you for everything that you're doing. Thank you so very much. I can't wait till next time. That was a quick 30 minutes. I have so much more. No. <laughs> I know. I'm definitely going to have both you and your son back. And shout out to allapproach.com. That guy is killing it. He's giving you a <laughs> free marketing strategies and you're lucky to have him as a son. I know, I know, I know. So like, oh boy, I got jackpot, but yeah, you did. So guys, as always, I want to thank you guys for tuning into the Sisters Talk podcast. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share this video, make sure that you share the title because that's what you're going to type into the event right link, which is sisterhood self-care series. Remember, you can always go to the website, which I have provided in this link. So guys, we will see you on next Sunday. Actually, not next Sunday. We'll see you again on September 5th. I'm taking off this Sunday. I know, <laughs> I'm going to do some real self-care again. This week. <laughs> um, and when we come back, we'll have Nathan Bridges. And he's going to talk about self-protection for our Black youth. The live comments below, guys. So I'll see you guys on September 5th. You guys have a blessed Sunday. Bye, guys.